Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam, and today we will learn about endometrial hyperplasia on ultrasound. Endometrial hyperplasia refers to abnormally thickened endometrium. Its main symptoms include heavy menstrual bleeding, intermenstrual bleeding, and irregular menstrual cycles in premenopausal women. In older women, postmenopausal bleeding is often an indicator of endometrial hyperplasia. On ultrasound, the endometrial thickness can be measured. These are transvaginal images of the uterus in longitudinal plane. The fundus is the upper part of the uterus. This echogenic linear structure is the endometrium. It is surrounded by a hypoechoic layer called the junctional zone. This is the inner myometrium. And this thick layer is the myometrium the muscular layer of the uterus. The cervix is the lowermost part of the uterus. In premenopausal women of reproductive age, the thickness of the endometrium varies throughout the menstrual cycle in response to hormonal changes. During the menstrual phase, days 1 to 4, the endometrial lining is thinnest, measuring around 2 to 4 millimeters as the shedding occurs. In the early proliferative phase, days 5 to 9, it begins to regenerate and thickens to about 5 to 7 millimeters. By the late proliferative or pre-ovulatory phase, which is from day 10 to 14, estrogen stimulates further growth and the endometrium can reach up to 11 millimeters. During the secretory phase, which is from days 15 to 28, under the influence of progesterone, the endometrium becomes even thicker, ranging from 7 to 16 millimeters, and appears more echogenic due to increased glandular activity and stromal edema, preparing for possible implantation. In postmenopausal women who are not on hormone replacement therapy, HRT, an endometrial thickness of 5 millimeters or less is generally considered normal. However, if the endometrial lining measures exactly 5 millimeters, or there is any postmenopausal bleeding, further evaluation, such as an endometrial biopsy, may be warranted. This is because even a seemingly borderline thickness can be associated with underlying pathology, particularly in the presence of symptoms like bleeding. Monitoring or investigating further helps rule out conditions such as endometrial hyperplasia or cancer. In postmenopausal women who are on hormone replacement therapy, HRT, an endometrial thickness of up to 8 mm is generally considered within the normal range. However, this threshold can vary depending on the type and regimen of HRT being used, such as continuous versus sequential therapy. Because different HRT protocols can influence the endometrial lining differently, interpreting endometrial thickness in these women requires consideration of their specific treatment. Any abnormal symptoms, such as unexpected bleeding, may still warrant further investigation regardless of the measured thickness. We will look at some cases of endometrial hyperplasia seen on ultrasound and compare its ultrasound appearance with a normal endometrial appearance. In our first case, this postmenopausal patient presented with heavy bleeding and was not on hormonal replacement therapy. In postmenopausal women, a thickness over 5 mm, especially if accompanied by symptoms like bleeding, warrants further evaluation. Here the endometrium appears abnormally thick. Its thickness was 22 mm. Usually in endometrial hyperplasia, the endometrium appears uniformly hyperechoic and it has smooth borders. It does not have irregular borders and no heterogeneous areas. In some cases of endometrial hyperplasia, anechoic or hypoechoic cystic areas may be present inside the thickened endometrium. These cystic spaces are more likely to indicate hyperplasia rather than other conditions such as endometrial carcinoma. This was a postmenopausal patient on hormonal therapy. The endometrial thickness here was 13 mm, which means it is abnormally thick. The endometrial contour in this case is smooth, so it is more likely an endometrial hyperplasia. 
but if there are irregular contours, it raises suspicion for atypical hyperplasia or endometrial carcinoma, so biopsy is recommended. This image also shows a smooth contour of the endometrium. This increases the chance that it is endometrial hyperplasia and not a malignancy. If in premenopausal patients the endometrial thickness is 16 mm, for example, and the patient is unsure of her period cycle, a follow up scan a few days to a week later is advised because during the secretory phase, which is from day 15 to 28 of the cycle, the endometrial thickness is physiologically 16 mm or even greater. So when a follow-up scan is done a few days later, the endometrial thickness will be reduced due to the phase of the cycle. And if the endometrial thickness is not reduced, it may be due to endometrial hyperplasia. On color Doppler evaluation of endometrial hyperplasia, the thickened endometrium will either show no internal vascularity or a mildly increased internal vascularity. In this case, the endometrial thickness was 29 millimeters. The thickened endometrium in this case is having a heterogeneous echotexture. It is not uniformly hyperechoic as seen in previous cases. Also, it has an irregular contour, an irregular shape. These two features are more concerning for atypical hyperplasia or carcinoma. Biopsy is advised in such cases. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for more imaging videos.